Good morning guys, I just woke up and I thought it was time for the next tutorial. Now, I already recorded this tutorial once, but I lost the footage, so good job, Sharkwind. I'm doing it again. Hello friend, do you want to be able to do this, and this, and this? So this tutorial has been voted more than 20 days ago. I'm sorry. I blame school, but now it's over. Can't promise anything, but let's hope for the best. The tutorial you've been waiting for is the Destroying Terrain tutorial. Before I start, I want to ask you to drop a like and hit the bell, because it does help out my channel, as well as myself. But with that on the side, let's just get in the tutorial. So first off, we need some scenery. I'm gonna get straight to the point in this one. Import it from world, because that's a thing now. And bras for a random freaking house, because that's what I call the world. Loading regions. Okay, come on. You can do it, buddy. Hey, okay, so I've already marked where I want the scenery to be, so I'm just gonna take both of these markers here. You'll see what they are when I actually export all this. Now we need to memorize what kind of a chunk we're gonna take. So in the top view, it's already marked, so we don't need that. But in the side view, I want to take the top of this mountain, that's it, and then the bottom, so one pixel of the earth here is left. So remember this, because you're gonna need it afterwards. So this is a piece of a random freaking house. Okay, so let's put it to zero. 0, 0, 0, because this is now my center. As you see, the markers here were nothing but redstone blocks. I just built it so I know, oh, this is where I need to take the scenery. So that's it. This is the house we're gonna crush. We're gonna destroy it. So what I'm gonna do is add some explosion particles because, because we gotta destroy the house somehow. Open editor. Now, I'm not gonna guide you through the particle creator because, like, this is not a tutorial about particle creators, it's a tutorial about terrain destruction. If you want a particle tutorial, vote for it in my Discord server because it's one of the listed options, and if you want it, Gotta vote it. Now I'm gonna click this icon just to browse for a preset which already exists. So, so yeah, if you play it out, this is what the explosion looks like. Pretty much like a Minecraft explosion. So let's just position it here somewhere because this part of the roof is gonna explode. That's mostly it for my animator. We can just minimize this and open up Minecraft because we need Minecraft for this to work. Uh, open up 1.13 because 1.14 is not supported yet. Or maybe if the update is out, maybe it does, but my version, that's not the thing yet. So I'm gonna stick with 1.13 until Numi updates it. A random freaking house again. Oh, I just like yelling. So as this opens, as you see, this this is my random freaking house. What we need to do is destroy this roof. Now you could destroy it hand by hand and stuff, but I want to go for a simpler method and possibly a more realistic one, and I'm literally going to use TNT to destroy my roof. <laughs> and I'm overall pretty satisfied because this looks like the roof exploded, so that's it. I can just save it and quit it. So back in my animator, we're gonna add a new scenery. Eh, white capitals. Normal and destroyed. So we have two variants of normal and destroyed. The destroyed one is gonna import another scenery from world. Bras for the random freaking house again. Loading region. So how was your day? Oh, how loading. Zoom out. Okay, it's loading again. <laughs> this region. And on the map, it was like the top of the mountain here. Bottom right there. So now it's done. This is what I'm importing. And of course, the scenery is gonna get summoned in a very strange position. But this one is at 0, 0, 0. So let's put this one to 0, 0, 0. They're in the same place. So if I make the normal one invisible, you can see what changes as this little uh, hole in the roof appears. So let's make this bottom one invisible, the destroyed one. And at frame 20, I'm gonna make the normal one invisible and the destroyed one visible. So they just shift places. Uh, the explosion particles, I'm just gonna drag this to 20 because like happened at the same time. So like this explosion is what made this. Now, lock all the components, and that's mostly it for the destroying the terrain. Now, obviously, in your animation, you're gonna want some blocks to be flying outwards, and there's, once again, two ways you can do this. So, import a block, planks, uh, oak planks in my case. You can just delete it from the timeline. It just needs to be in the library, at least. And also add the logs, but I can't find it, so I'm just gonna... Oh, there we go. Uh, delete from the timeline, so they're in the library. So first method is the unrealistic one. Uh, click on the editor for the explosion and add a new particle. Uh, make it destroy after time of spawn, five seconds or something, just so the blocks, the particles don't stay on there forever because that's just extra lag. Destroy them after five seconds or so. Uh, name this one log, and in the kind sprite, just go for log. Now, if you press S to summon the particles, logs are gonna be one of your particles, so... If I summon this, bam, it's like the blocks were destroyed or something. But this method is not the best because particles might fall through your roof and they don't collide with any other blocks. Okay, wait, wait, I can turn up the ground so like they bounce back up. Just gotta find the ground because I don't know where the ground is. 
it will look like they're on blocks, but then again, they're still flying on the cliff there, so that's not really the best. You can see where this could be useful and where it would not be useful. So mostly I just use the other method, which is animating each block by hand. So I want to select the planks in the library, click this icon to add it in the timeline. Also, I want to lock it on the destroyed version. And first things first, custom rotation point, put it to 888 so it's in the center, put it in a folder and call it planks. You will see why the folder is necessary. Uh, but that's it for now. Now I want to position this folder so it looks like the block is where it should be. But then again, I really don't want to be positioning it like so. So just turn on this grid, which lets you lock it every 16 pixels or so. Now, uh, it's only positioning it at the edges and I can't get it straight in the center. So let's turn this down to 8. And as you see, now it's perfect, because, yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, add a frame for this block so it's completely still. Duplicate the folder and move it, because we are going to build ourselves a house. Anyway, do the same with logs. And when you rotate it, rotate the log, not the folder, but the log. Now, be right back. I'm soon to be finished. Alright, this house seems perfect now, right? Kinda is, but then again it's still not, because like, I left some air pockets in between because I was too lazy to add individual planks inside of the structure. If I make these blocks invisible, I'm gonna put them in a folder, call it blocks, just so I can make all of them invisible at once. These are the blocks that I've added individually. I just added the outer shell, not the inside blocks. When you're gonna work on your animation, you're probably gonna want to add the inside blocks as well, because it's much more realistic. But for my means, I'm gonna do it this way. and I'll Simply what you need to do is animate the blocks flying upwards. The particle method is useful if you don't need to show the blocks collision and stuff. And this method is useful because like you can literally do anything you want with the blocks, which is more realistic, plus it looks like the scenery is actually tearing itself apart. The particles just make the blocks invisible, summon random other blocks and then just make them all fly upwards. Plus they can clip with each other and that's not a good thing. But here you have perfect control. What you would do regularly is let's go 40 frames forward, example, move the block outwards you can turn off the grid so you can have more realistic results and then just mess with the rotation however you want just rotate it everywhere you want and the folder would only go upwards here and then downwards here then the first frame of the folder would have an ease out and the second uh, keyframe would have the ease in and what that would do bam the block is flying upwards! Wow! You can mess with these however you want. Okay, yeah, this should probably be made way longer and stuff, but afterwards, this block should bounce off the ground and spin continuously however you want. But I'm just gonna add the first blow, which is just the first row of blocks flying outwards. And that's it, because this is still just a tutorial. Cut me some slack. So one thing you can also do is the yellow blocks are flying outwards, but this one is just going up with not much motion, but the rotation is all pumped up. So, so like it got hit by an angle, so it just rotated instead of making it fly outwards. Experiment with however you want. You can have control over every single block. I'm just gonna get back to you when I finish all this. We're done! Now if I play this, I might get a small leg spike because of all the particles and blocks, but... This is it! BAM! The house has exploded and I have modified my terrain. As you see, these blocks quite literally rip off the scenery. They're here and they literally just detach from the scenery and fly outwards. Which looks pretty cool if you ask me. You know, the only problem is that the, the blocks are moving too fast and the explosion is just like... Oh! The first frame is going up slowly. And then the second ones are still pretty close, so they just suddenly fall down. Oh yeah, that's not how you do it. If the explosion is yay big, the block shouldn't be flying out too fast, because they're flying faster than the explosion, which then again doesn't look realistic. That's a mistake I've made right here. But yeah, that's a tutorial how to destroy the terrain. Surprisingly simple. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, but mostly I hope you've learned a thing or two about destroying your terrain. Now good luck animating, and stay sharp.